The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Thursday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. And we got a little red action across the board. We got higher yields. Uh, we got the tenure right now, 4.2%, I believe we're at. Let's pull it up as we kick off the program, man. You talk about some yields. What are we at? Excuse me, 4.17 right now. We probably hit 4.2. We're going to kick it off with yields. Why not, man? Look at the acceleration. No, we're at low, so we're talking about 4.17%, the yield currently. Right now in the 10-year, you have lower price yet again, extending below the lows of yesterday. Uh, yeah, higher yields coming at this market in a pretty dramatic fashion. The highs for the 10-year, I believe it's only 43 or 4.35, we're approaching 4.2 right now, the yield on the 10-year. Pretty remarkable action. You jump to the 30-year, we're down a full point and 13 ticks. I kick off the program uh, with yields because you're catching some huge moves, man, and it's mattering. It's mattering to equities right now. We take a look at the yield curve. Let's kick it off with the yield curve as well. Why not? You got the two-year up about two basis points. We're above 4.9%. As I mentioned, the 10-year, at about 4.17. I mean, pretty remarkable. You have the 30 year up a tenth of a percentage point. That is a huge move across the board as we get higher yield coming at you. The one year, even up about one basis point, 5.4. Look at these yields, man. Uh, let's see, where's the six month? 5.5% on the six month. Pretty remarkable across the board, man, these yields. We jump back to the chart. So, with higher yields, what do you have? You have lower price, man. You got higher yields coming at you. You have the cost of capital going up. You have a downgrade for our country's rating yesterday. Not anything surprising. It's not like Fitch came out and said, we looked at the books and we found some stuff that people aren't aware of, right? They just downgraded it to what? Double A plus for obvious reasons that we're all aware of. I think it was Jamie Dimon that was talking yesterday at one point saying, and I found it interesting, you know, yeah, the rating agency, they can make their ratings. But the market decides. The market puts an interest rate. That's the rating, right? That's the real price of supply and demand. That's what the market is rating, the yield on it. And yeah, maybe the market's going to start talking and saying that you got to go up, especially when you look out longer term, right? It's not a lot of yield when you look out longer term. And yes, folks, I think we will eventually get paid only because politicians might be able to hold things up, okay? If spending's out of control, the debt is out of control for sure, okay? It's an easy topic that we all agree on. But there's no way that that impasse would last because the same people who were elected who are frustrated by the debt or the reason why maybe we could even border on default, well, we're all holders of that debt. So would be defaulting on our own money. So that would get repaired. Maybe it would finally get a deal done with some type of compromise right is what they're talking about so this is an interesting situation as in is a full de default possible not really and that's what the market's really looking at right is an impasse possible kind of surprised we haven't hit a shutdown to some degree for some period of months at some point i feel like that's coming in the next few years things just become so divisive every time we have it up for grabs and people in both parties are always a little bit upset, upset on the outskirts. Compromise is very difficult. So what does that mean? That means probably you should have a little bit of higher yield. Doesn't mean it should be some astronomical yield that you're not going to get paid. Okay, but should it be like 4%? Should it be that low? I don't know if it should be that low. Because things would reverberate across the board. As in, you think you can buy Apple debt instead? Do you think Apple's a more reliable company than the U.S. government right now? You might say, hey, listen... The people in charge of Apple, they're going to pay their bills, right? I'm not sure our politicians will be able to agree. Well, guess what? Apple, they hold a lot of treasuries, right? Or whatever they hold, right? So everything would reverberate. Nobody would get paid. It would get fixed. But we're seeing higher yield. And we're seeing higher yield of a repricing a little bit to some of the risks that are present in this market. And we'll see if we hit the yield, uh, the highs on the yields, as we're now at 4.173 
the yield on the 10-year as this price just continues to drop, man. Check it out. We're making lows right now. Very interesting coming into non-farm payrolls, right? Look where we are on this chart. We're actually below where we were in March. Yeah, that low, 110.12. We're at 110.07. We're challenging the lows we had in July, which was 110.05. This is on the 10-year. And there are your lows last year, around October. Yeah, October 21st, that correlated to the high yield, which, as I mentioned, was about 4.3, 4.35, I think. Maybe somebody has it in the den, the high print for the 10-year yield going back last October. I think it was about 4.35, potentially somewhere there. We're pretty close, right? All right, we jump back to the equities. So you had the market sell off on the Europe Open. And we're challenging coming back into those lows right now. I was chatting with my dad earlier. I said, do you see any of the action? We were just uh, early, early in the morning. And yeah, about 2 in the morning, this thing was at about 45.40. That's pretty close to where we closed out last night. And then it was a pretty quick sell-off. From about 3 in the morning Eastern time till 4 in the morning, you sell off. We bounce a bit. We're still lower by about 20 points. NASDAQ 100 down 7 tenths percent. Now, I talked about Apple, right, in a theoretical well, we get some main events today, man, with Apple and Amazon. We'll see how they do. Ahead of their numbers, after the bell, you have Apple off $1 right now at 191.66. And what are we doing? Yeah, we're barely over that $3 trillion mark within about a dollar. It's about one ninety and seventy cents or something pegs them at the $3 trillion, so they're flirting and trading lower. It would make sense they ring that bell, right? They ring the bell, they make it all the way up to what, 198.23 on that spike high. That was on the news, I believe that they were developing their own chat GPT, right? Be a little bit ironic if they got their final thrust higher to 198.23. And from there, we're off almost $7 right now. It's been a pretty, pretty quick pullback over the last couple of days from almost 197 to 191 right now. That's almost $100 billion in market cap Apple's given up, okay? So they get their numbers after the bell today. You're talking about a company. We have about a $6 move priced into their numbers after the bell today. We have Amazon with their numbers as well. Amazon talking about a $7.50 move for $128 stock. A little bit more volatility than Apple. Amazon today, they're actually flat with a negative market. Yeah, they took their, their licks yesterday, though, man. From 132 down to 128, we're trading 128.14. We take a longer look at Amazon shares, and we're basically right back to that 50% price action on Amazon. We trade up to 135, we're back to 128 right now for Amazon shares. So we get Amazon after the bell, we get Apple after the bell as well today. We jump around to some of the commodities, crude, that's a longer term chart. We back it up to the 10 minute, and there's some volatility for you, man. Yesterday, we're lower. Today, we're back above $80, 80.22. We were just back above 81 as crude, rocking and rolling. This market, it's going to be an interesting one today, man, especially getting positioned before the non-farm payroll numbers tomorrow. OK, we'll get into uh, weekly jobless claims as well. As we pull that article up, jobless claims. 227,000 initial application, initial applications, 227,000 four week moving average falling to the lowest level since March. The four week average is in black. There is just no pause in this market, man, when it comes to jobless claims. We get jobs numbers tomorrow. Uh, we get two big companies with their earnings today. We get a lot to talk about, folks. Stay tuned. We'll be coming back in three minutes. Don't go away. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. DFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. we got S&Ps approaching the lows of the session right now. We're down 19 points at 45.18. And yeah, you just back it up to a week ago, man, and you're talking about what now? 116 S&P points from that high that we had last Thursday at 46.34. We make it back up to the 7.86, and uh, we roll over from that price point. Yeah, pretty much on Monday, we were chopping around. We got that acceleration towards the end of the day Monday, and it's been a one-way trip from about 46.20 down to 45.20 right now. And as I mentioned, yields, the story of the day right now. Off 19 ticks, we got the 10-year right now flirting with 4.2%, the yield on the 10-year. Uh, risk-free rate of return. Not a bad risk-free rate of return, man. I mean, think about it, folks, okay? No matter what I say, the conversation you do want to be having with yourself, okay, especially if you're in retirement or if you have even a portion of your money that you're allocating, okay, because we have a risk-free rate of return that's approaching 5% right now, and that's going out almost five years. I brought this up many times, many times, but this is the scenario that you want to be playing out in your head, okay? So you're getting about 5% on your money. The s and is at about 4,500. You go out a year. And that's got to put the S&P at 47.25, okay? You go out two years, that's got to put the S&P approaching 5,000, okay? You go out three years, you go out four years and you're at 5,500. So you have to realize that risk-free right now over a four-year period, let's do it one more even. Over a five-year period, okay, in five years right now, because that is, if you did a CD ladder, okay, and this is the conversation you want to have with yourself, you can lock in 
buying the S&P right now, and in five years, you can lock in that that S&P will be trading at 57.43. You can't do that, right? But you can do that with risk-free yields right now in just a CD ladder of approaching 5%. So have those conversations with yourself and realize you want to have the exposure. Are you able to withstand a potential pullback? We're at some lofty prices right now. I mean, when I run this over my head, and I know I was talking bearish a while back, okay, but there's nothing wrong with protecting yourself. And listen, my retirement money, my 401k money, yeah, I'm in the market. I got plenty of time, man. It's all invested in the market. I'm 43 years old right now. Things will be fine going forward, okay? But if you're approaching an area where you don't want to withstand a five-year pullback, okay, maybe that five-year pullback will put you in a place you're not comfortable with. Have these conversations with yourself and say, you know what? I would be ecstatic right now with the run we've had this year from 3,800 to 4,500 if you told me that I can guarantee myself the money I have in the market right now is trading at 40, 57, 45, we'll call it, in five years. You can do that with risk-free rates of return right now in the yield. Now, the flip side of that, right, is that we just traded up almost 1,200 points in the last year. We basically did from 3,500 to above 4,600, okay? That would be your entire price appreciation over five years if you lock that in, okay? So the opportunity cost is real, man, okay? That's why I have my money in retirement just locked into really some growth stocks, man, going forward, still being young enough that I can have that exposure. There's a very real chance in five years that the s and is at 10,000, okay? That's your risk. But at least have that conversation and realize right now that over a five-year period, you can be at 57.43. Over a four-year period, you can add 1,000 S&P points risk-free right now. And I think that's going to be a little bit of a headwind for the market because you look at the price valuations we're at right now, yields are so much higher no matter what you're talking about, okay? Do you remember the whole conversation of how growth companies are built on future cash that is now a lower value because interest rates are higher, that is a real part of the valuation basis of growth companies, okay? It's based on future earnings, and the value of those future earnings is less when the risk-free rate of return is so high, right? Versus paying for future earnings when yields are very low is a much more profitable scenario, okay? Yields are very high right now. So future earnings are not valued as much because I just gave you the scenario, right? You can get risk-free 5,700, so you really better be getting some big-time earnings to pay for them if you can do it without the risk of a growth company, et cetera. Uh, nonetheless, sitting at these price points, seeing what yields are doing right now, uh, be aware that 5% is out there over a five-year period right now. And I would just do some ladders if you're in that at all. I know this is like a market show. We're talking CDs and yields. But we're in an exceptional period of time right now, folks. Getting over generational inflation, yields are extremely high. We're seeing it pushing the highs yet again. And yes, they can go higher. And that's why I like maybe the ladder. You know, if you're going to go out five years, don't buy a five-year right now. You can't go wrong with that. Buy a five-year ladder, you know, and then they're rolling every year. You're repricing it, and you can't get hurt either way because the problem is is if inflation – so let's do the risk on the, the yield. What's the opportunity cost of locking in the yields on the inflation standpoint? Well, if you lock in that five-year return right now, let's say you buy a five-year CD, right? You say, man, I can't go wrong. I'm probably getting 4.5% right now on a five-year CD. I don't know what it is. Maybe somebody can tell me. Say, I can't go wrong. You can go wrong if inflation roars back up and hits 9 and 10% again, right? As opposed to if you're in a five-year ladder, follow this. If you're in a five-year ladder, you lock in an APY of approaching 5% right now because you have such high yields on the one year, on the two year, things start to trail off a bit on the three, four, and five year, right? And I'll pull up these rates during the next break. Maybe I can even get them up right now. Uh, let me see if I can get them up right now as I talk. The great thing about a ladder is, is if a year from now inflation has roared back up, what's going to happen? You're going to be able to take that first year ladder, you're going to be able to take that, rebuy a five year, and boom, you're, you're back at a higher price point because if you lock yourself in to 4.6%, folks, and we have inflation roar back up to 10%, you're losing a lot of money, right? Uh, four year, 4.65. Thank you, as I'm pulling it up myself right now. Thank you. 
Yeah, so my APY I'm showing on a five-year ladder is 4.89% is your APY. And on a five-year, I was pretty close. 4.55 is the yield on a five-year. A four-year is 4.65. Uh, on the short end of that, you're talking about 5.35 for a one-year, 5.05 for a two-year. Uh, so have those conversations, man, because you're talking about 5,700. You're talking about 5,500 over four years. You add 1,000 S&P points after we just ran 1,000 S&P points over the period of a year, right? Uh, opportunity costs and everything, folks. There are costs and risks in many decisions, especially when it comes to your investments. But realize, and I don't think a lot of people realize, how exceptional the period of time we are in is. We had 0% interest rates for a very long period of time. We're back to a real rate that you're actually earning something, even above inflation at this point, okay? And you're back to a nominal rate of pushing 5%, man, which we haven't seen for some time. And I don't think those are going to be going down for some time. And on the CD front, right, when you go to banks, they're going to have to be paying for capital for some some time right now. So you got a period of a year or two maybe that they're remaining high. But have that conversation. We're seeing yield spike yet again today. And who's to say where inflation ends up in three or six months, folks? Uh, we got crude prices back above 80 bucks, right? That's going to be in the conversation for energy prices. We got volatility, but you take a look at the last year. We're talking about higher prices all the way back to November, $80. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for the open. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFA. NN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. 
forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got an S&P approaching lows, lows, 45.16, where as low as about 45.10 at about 4 a.m. Eastern time this morning. NASDAQ 100 challenging those lows as well. We just hit a low, 15,379 right now. We were as low as 15,339 last night. Dow off 109, 35,300 on the dot, and the Russell off by 10. See the pullback in the Russell. How about that run, man? Russell is up, what? 50 plus points down 50 plus points that's two and a half percent up two and a half percent down just from where we were we did it both ways right we went down up and then down two and a half percent down two and a half percent up two and a half percent down all in a week that's that's remarkable moves on the russell man we jump over to the vix the vix has life again pushing 17 at 1693 as the price of insurance goes up with a little bit of market action to the downside and uh, yeah that was one of the articles that i had up here Sun jolt, sun jump in volatility spells trouble for U.S. stocks. They talk about the VIX here. It was at a low of 1270 last week. It's going to be interesting to see, excuse me, what happens here as investors have been using this low VIX for some time. Investors focusing on risk and volatility control strategies who allocate stock market exposure based on market moves have been among those buying into the stock market rally in recent months. And while the buying from these types of investors has helped the S&P get within 5% of its all-time high, it could work in the opposite direction if the rise in volatility forces them to slash their equity exposure. Uh, nonetheless, we'll see what happens, how that plays out. So we talked about the yield curve here, okay? Uh, I'm going to jump to Mr. Ackman, Pershing Square Capital, in a moment, but we check out the yield curve again because he's going to talk about it. We're pushing 4.18%, the yield on the 10-year right now. The 30-year is sitting at 4.28%. Okay, in the 10-year, 4.18. The 30-year, about 4.28. Remarkable, you're only getting paid, right? A tenth percent more for going out 30 years versus going out 10 years. You back it up to the two-year, we're at 4.91. Yield inversion, as we've all been talking about. So Pershing, um, Pershing Square Capital, Mr. Ackman, he's going short. He's short the 30-year in specific. And it's an interesting argument, man. I think it's a, I think it's a real argument. He's, he's talking up his own book, okay? But let's jump over to the 30-year, which is the ZB in the futures. Uh, if he's been in this trade for a week, he's already made six points from 126 to 120, right? So maybe he's talking it up now. Nonetheless, it's been quite a pullback as we have higher yields coming at you right now. The argument he makes in here is that the deluge of supply that we've been talking about as well. They talk about it down here. We're talking about the 10-year and beyond has been weighed by refunding debt sales of $103 billion next week, up from $96 billion in May, in the first boost to the so-called quarterly refunding since 2001. That's going to include $23 billion of 30-year bonds, which are scheduled one week from today, August 10th. The 30-year yield could reach 5.5% if long-term inflation holds at 3% instead of 2, according to Ackman. 5.5. Well, I pulled up the curve to show you that we're at 4.28 right now. That would be quite a shift for longer-term rates to push 5.5% on a 30-year basis. There are many times in history where the bond market reprices the long end of the curve in a matter of weeks and this seems like one of those times well that was a mammoth move from 126 to 120 man but we're still at only 4.28 percent right so look at where we are where we have the potential to go and the price action that that might create uh you get the downgrade this week now he talks about this as a hedge to his equity positions okay He's making a sizable bet on declines for the 30-year treasuries as a hedge on the impact of higher long-term rates on stocks. Uh, he also mentions in here, though, that the best hedges are the ones that you would make uh, uh, standing alone. Nonetheless, I think it's a real argument, man. 4.3% with everything going on where inflation is. We've all heard the conversation, right, about maybe the Fed is going to accept a 3% number in the longer term basis as markets continue to sell off. We're pushing 45.12 right now. 
let's see where we are on a Fibonacci basis. This is a daily from just even July 10th. That was a one-way trip, man. Yeah, we're crossing the 50% of that pullback. Let's back this out. Let's see where we're. Let's see what kind of price levels we start dealing with, as this thing really. Look how far we come, man. A three eight two of the run we've had over the last five months would bring us down another two hundred points in the S and P. And what would that do? It would fill the gap from June 9th. Put that one on your radar, man. Forty three twenty on the S and P's. That's your three eight two. That's the gap there. And where else is that? Oh man, look at this. Yeah, right there. It'd be a retest of the August high of last year. Well, if you want some price action, you want some targets on your chart, man, there it is. It would make sense that you could come back in that area, maybe an area of support. You'd fill the gap that you have from June, as I mentioned. That's a weekly. It's got a gap on a weekly basis as well. And boy, we got a long way to go because this is a one-way trip of almost an 800-point leg. And I didn't even cherry pick the high. Sometimes on Fibonacci's, folks, you know, you take a look at the daily, you take a look at this area. I just kind of picked the, the maybe a line of linear regression type high there, right? We hit that price level on July 28th. We hit it on the 31st. We turned over on August 1st. We got just slightly above that level on July 27th. If you back it up on a 10-day basis, you can see how that kind of lines up with potentially an area of resistance. Maybe you could say it's a little bit higher. But boy, when you go longer term, man, even just going back the last couple of years, that 382 is 4320, and we got to a high of 4327 in August of 2022. Um, but boy, we got a long way to go if we get any type of a retracement here. It's been quite a run of 800 points, man, in the S&Ps. And that's why I think that risk-free rate of return seems even more attractive, right? Because you're locking it in after you've risen 1,000 points in the S&Ps and you have yields now climbing. You wait for a pullback and the numbers change pretty dramatically, as you can see, as we're moving pretty quickly in this market right now with the S&P basically off 100 points in two days. And we got yields, man. And and you, you see the case getting made by many on Wall Street that they could be dramatically higher. Very difficult to imagine 2% is the world we're going back to, man. So we'll see where we go. Crude, 80.25. We jump over to the gold contract this morning. Gold trading at 19.73. We take a look at the dollar index. Dollar strength, 102.66. We're up another eight basis points right now. Eight pennies at 102.66. We're a little bit higher in the pre-market. Dollars had quite a run as well. The last week, you've gone from 160 to 102.60, two full points. So keep your eye on the dollar. Keep your eye on yields, because right now it's going on, no matter what the Fed is doing, okay? We have a repricing of yields going on. That's leading to a much stronger dollar, which is weighing on markets. That is the correlation in this market right now okay we've seen it in yields especially you look at the 30 year we dropped from 126 to 120 at that same time we've had the dollar index go from just above 100 160 two full points to 10260 and in that same time we've seen the S&Ps drop from last Thursday at 46.34. Really, it's been a quick shot over the last couple days, but we are down 120 points, two and a half percent. Stay tuned, folks. We'll take a look at Amazon. We'll take a look at Apple. We'll take a look at them before their numbers tonight when we get back. Stay tuned. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. 
as a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the US futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the fund is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&P off 23 right now. NASDAQ 100 catches a little bit of a bid. We're only off about 60 points. That's only four tenths percent of the red right now. Dow off about five tenths percent. Russell off five tenths. S&P off about five tenths percent. We talked about Apple and Amazon. So both of them with their numbers after the bell tonight. Bloomberg talking about this, of course. Apple and Amazon results pose tech rally's toughest hurdle yet. I mean, check out these two stocks, man. We'll blow up this chart here. Apple, Amazon results follow strong gains. This is this year, okay? Amazon's in the black here, above 50%. Apple is in the red here, almost 50%. NASDAQ 100, up 40%. Both of these equities outperforming even the NASDAQ 100. We know the run Apple has had, right? Yeah, for sure. Uh, they continue to talk about it here. So this rally, some of the numbers in here, okay? This rally... Six trillion dollars in value to the S&P 500 index this year. That's almost a trillion dollars a month, man. We're only seven months into the year and we've added six trillion dollars in value, adding a trillion dollars in value. But the sector has struggled to advance after coming within 5% of the NASDAQ 100's all-time high last month. Apple, 48% gain so far. Three trillion dollar company. And let's see how these companies are trading right now. Because Apple was flirting. Ah, they're still above a trillion. You know what, though? They might have gotten under that number at 190.69. It's pretty close to where they are. We jumped to some of the other FANG stocks, Microsoft shares trading down one-tenth percent. Amazon ahead of their numbers, down about six-tenths percent right now. We jump over to Google, off half a percent. NVIDIA shares up one-tenth percent right now. We jump to some of the other companies with their numbers. Warner Brother Discovery with their numbers. There's some volatility for you. Only down about 16 cents. This thing had some volatility priced into it. Off about 1.2% on their numbers. And let's see. Oh, I did have them up. I'm going to lose. There we go. So they lose the subscribers after the max launch, but makes headway on their debt pay down. 95.8 million. Pretty remarkable, right? That they got that number. I mean, almost 100 million subscribers. And they're like the, the you know, vaunted stepchild or something of the streaming industry and they have a hundred million subscribers man global direct-to-consumer streaming subscribers at the end of the period 95.8 million the market though was looking for about two million above that number okay 
they're paying down some of their debt. $2.7 billion is what they're trying to pay down. Loss per share, 51 cents versus 38 expected, though, and revenue they miss as well. Yeah, so this is probably going to be trading down. Revenue, 5% higher year over year on an actual basis, but 4% lower when you take into account foreign, foreign exchange currency. So they got a little bit lucky on the foreign exchange market right there. Yeah, so the direct-to-consumer streaming segment turned a profit for the first time during the first quarter of the year, but posted a loss of $3 million for the second quarter, okay? Execs had warned of that reversal, citing costs associated with the Max launch. If you're familiar, I have Max, I guess you call it now. It used to be HBO Max. Warner Brothers Discovery Studios dragged down earnings. Revenue segment down 8%. The Flash was released, but barely topped $100 million. That was a big problem for them. And yeah, so they are going to... Yeah, Discovery. When they... This this combo they're going to have with Discovery, man, that's going to be a, big, a good deal for them. They got 100 million subscribers. They're going to be a player. And, you know, half-joking, but this was the Bill Huang... Run up to 78 bucks before you go to $8. Pretty remarkable. But at some point, they're going to be a decent competitor there. And they're priced for a lot of hardships that are going on right now. I mean, they just launched that, Max. But there's nothing like HBO, man. I remember when I was a kid. It's pretty funny. So we're going back probably when I was like 10 years old, 8 years old. And I remember that HBO intro. I was just barely old enough to probably understand Um Remember, the HBO would be spinning in outer space, right? Folks, I'm going back 35 years ago, okay? And they're still around, and they're still one of the best production houses out there in terms of content. So they are going to be a player, and the Discovery Network they have in there, et cetera, it's a good combo they have going on. So I always kind of have this one on my radar. You're trading at 12 bucks right now. You're up from $8 at the beginning of the year, but you take a look at this equity, right? You're going back to all the way, basically, to where this thing was, uh, 8 bucks. In 2005, Warner Brothers Discovery, a bunch of spikes, and we're at some low prices there. So it might be an opportunity as things are not going that well, and they are at the beginning of that quest to turn things around. All right, what else we got pulled up here? Yeah, we talked about the downgrade, and shouldn't be too surprising here either, man. Listen, politics is the art of compromise, man. Everybody's got differing opinions, okay? We need some compromises, the, the far right and the far left get all the headlines because they say all the things and they get the loudest voices, okay? But we need some compromise because that's what it's going to take, and I don't expect that's what's coming right now. And that's kind of what the journal's talking about. Won't break Washington's tax and spending habits, and it's all over the place, folks, all right? You get tax cuts being given away by Republicans that just add to the debt and don't really do anything to that degree, even though they're promised to somehow be tax neutral. You have Democrats that want to spend a lot, right, and aren't as concerned with that. The tax debate of, of those that are wealthy paying more. And I tell you, one thing I was reading the other day, man, you know, it's it's the gap when you get to like, and it gets so political, but, but at some point, folks, I have a son that's two and a half years old, okay? And things do need to get repaired. And yes, you want to have stronger economics. But I tell you, the gap of people that are making like 1 million, 2 million, 5 million, 10 million, anywhere above that, your tax bracket drops dramatically as you get above that thresh threshold. You know, if you're a if you're a W two employee making two hundred fifty grand, four hundred grand, right, five hundred grand, a million dollars, you're getting taxed pretty heavily. But once you get out of that W two state and you're, you know, a real estate investor, right, you're 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 owning businesses and corporations and tax write offs and this and that. It's, uh, it's a tremendous amount of loopholes that exist there. So something needs to get done in the middle, you know? But guess what? That's not happening right now, man. And that's the whole case with higher yields as we have this conversation. And it's going to be really interesting if somehow we shift from the inflation debate, which matters, because that's where Pershing Square Capital is having that conversation of saying, listen, interest rates uh, are based on inflation. Inflation might be recalibrated here on a longer-term basis. And if that's the case you are going to see a repricing of yields on a longer term basis, right? And and it'd be interesting to see if that's where the rapid inflation debate goes now to the, what are we, what's our plateau? Where are we and what is that gonna do to yields? And right now, man, 
I think yields are waking up to the fact that, hey, this last hurrah from 3% to 2% might not be as quick as we think. And maybe the Fed will begin cutting. And guess what? If we get to like 3%, if we get to 3.2, if we get to 3.1, and they are convinced that we are at that level, they actually can make a reasonable case that you can cut because you're still in such a restrictive rate policy. We're at 5.5% on the Fed. If growth is only coming in at 3.1%, you can bring it down to four and a half. You can bring it down to four and a quarter and you're still restrictive. You can bring it down to three and a half and technically you'd still be restricted. That's what we get to watch play out. S&Ps right now, we trade to a low, 4508. We're bouncing a bit. Markets in negative territory. We got higher yields. We got one more segment. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. I got a chart of Qualcomm up here. Qualcomm down 10% right now. That's a $13 hit. We're trading at 116. We were trading yesterday. The close at about $130. We jump over to Qualcomm. They miss on revenue. They miss on guidance. Net income fell 52% year over year. Handset chip sales declined 25% year over year. They make a lot of the chips in low and high-end phone sales uh, that is in so that are in so many Android phones, most particularly. 
Earnings, they make a buck 87 versus a dollar 81. This is what's always so interesting in the, the market, right? You could make the case that what are they reporting? They're reporting their earnings for the last 90 days. They're also reporting a lot more than that, though, because if it was just their earnings, they make more, they made more than what the market was looking for. But what did they say? Well, they missed on revenue, 8.44 versus 8.5, and they missed on expectations, which you're coming in at a dollar 80 to two dollars a share with 8.1 to 8.9 billion market was looking for a dollar 91 on 8.7 billion net income dropped 52 percent and uh yeah they have a lot of android phones handset chip sales 25 percent decline year over year and they get some downgrades out there from deutsche bank among some others i believe so yeah qualcomm facing some heat man you're down 10 percent as uh, the phone, the high end and low end androids may be taking a hit as consumers take a hit. And that's what I was talking about. Keep October on your radar, man. Remember, October, the student loan payments, they begin in October. October, November, December. What's going to happen in the final three months of the year? Things might be getting squeezed a little bit. We're coming into the holidays. Student loan repayments begin for, I think, 27 million people. See what happens, man. Uh, it's an interesting day, folks. Thanks so much for starting your Thursday off with me. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's coming up next. And don't forget, uh, Teddy Kegstad, he's got a webinar coming up a week from this coming Monday as well, talking about Japanese candlesticks. Check that out on the front page of TFNN. We'll talk to Teddy next Wednesday again, but that should be interesting. $97, 60-minute webinar with our man Teddy. Stay tuned for Basil, folks. Live programming after that. S&P's off by 18. NASDAQ off by 35. We get the non-farm payroll numbers tomorrow morning as well. Stay tuned for Basil. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great one, folks.